everyone. I'm Sarah of Rich Textures Crochet and welcome. Today we are going to learn how to crochet the autumn stroll socks, which you can see here in the photo in front of you. As well, I have my own finished ones here uh, as well for you to look at. These are an intermediate pattern simply because they are socks uh, and uh, there's quite a little bit of technical work as far when it comes to working the heel and that in this pattern but as far as socks go it's made with fairly easy stitches you're going to see half double crochet stitches and single crochet stitches and a few double crochet stitches here up at the top so as ter in terms of stitches it's not too difficult to work and with this video tutorial hopefully you'll be well on your way and soon enjoying your own autumn stroll socks this is a great pattern because the socks do have quite a bit of stretch in them because of this mesh stitch. So they are very forgiving. Now today for the pattern, I'm going to be using a little bit of this Stroll Fingering Weight Yarn by Knit Picks and We Crochet. And I just wanna give them a shout out and a thank you for providing the yarn for this tutorial today. I'm also going to be using a 3.75 millimeter crochet hook. As far as the quantities for your socks, if you're working the small size, you might be able to get away with one ball of yarn uh, for a pair of socks. There's approximately 231 yards in this ball of yarn. If you're looking to work the medium or the large size, which is range from women's seven to women's 10 foot sizing, uh, and that's according to US terms, then you're looking at wanting one and a half balls of this stroll yarn. Uh, there's quite a few colors there to work with on uh, the Knit Picks and We Crochet websites. This is a fingering weight yarn, uh, which is why we're using the smaller uh, crochet hook, but it also means that it is a thinner sock to wear so it's more better suited to an everyday wear sock so thank you so much for joining me the free written crochet pattern which you might uh, need for this video uh, is on my blog at richtexturescrochet.com and there's links to it in the description of this video as well as links to the items that I have shown you here. Today in the tutorial I will be demonstrating how to make the smallest size sock which is a women's 5-6 size but there are two other sizes there for you as well to check out. So again, thank you for joining me. While you're here, don't forget to subscribe and uh, give this video a thumbs up if you like it. And as well, connect with me across social media. I love to see uh, when Ridge Textures crochet fans have finished their projects. So feel free to tag me on social media so I can come and take a peek. And just one more thing before we actually jump into the pattern here. Uh, the pattern is written in such a way so that you're going to have uh, the sizes indicated. Uh, the first number is your 5-6, the second number is your 7-8, and the third number is your 9-10. So that's how they're going to be written out in the pattern. Because of that, you may wish, depending on which size you're working, wish to go through and either highlight or somehow circle the rounds and uh, stitches that you are going to be working so that you don't lose your place uh, when you are working the pattern or add stitches or take away stitches here and there. So I've, because I'm working the smaller size, I've just gone around, gone through and circled the times when the pattern is different. Again, if you're working the larger sizes, I do recommend running and grabbing the written crochet pattern on my blog. The majority of our pattern today is worked in rounds. So we're going to, and the pattern is started up at the cuff of your sock. So up here at the top and we're working down toward the toe. It is worked all as one piece. So what we're going to do is we're going to begin by making a slip knot. And one other thing I should have mentioned, <laughs> for later on when it comes to the toe of your sock, you are going to need a couple of stitch markers. 
So back up to the cuff where we are starting, what you're going to do is make your slip knot. And then as we are working the smallest size of the sock or size 5 6, you're going to begin by making a foundation chain of 50 chains. Once you have chained 50 chains, you're going to join with a slip stitch in that first stitch to form a ring. When you do, just be careful that you don't twist your chain. Once you have worked your foundation chain, then be caref being careful not to twist the chain, you're going to join with a slip stitch into that first stitch. You're then ready to begin round one of your cuff. And for round one, you're going to begin by chaining three and this chain three counts as a double crochet stitch. Once you have chained three into the next chain and into each chain all the way around, you're going to work one double crochet. When I'm working in my chain, I like to work into the back bump of my chain because it gives a nice finished uh, top to the sock. So go ahead, work one double crochet in each chain all the way around. When you come back to the beginning, you're going to join with a slip stitch into the top of your chain three. At the end of your round one, you will join with a slip stitch into the top of that first stitch. For round two of your cuff, you're going to begin by chaining one, and you're now going to work around a front and back post double crochet stitches. So beginning with this first chain three, which counts, which counts as a stitch, you're going to front post double crochet around the first stitch. So yarn over, bring your hook in front of your work, insert your hook around the post of that chain three, uh, from the front through to the back and then to the front again, yarn over and draw up a loop, yarn over, pull through two, and yarn over, pull through two. That's your front post double crochet. You're then going to back post double crochet around the post of the next stitch. So yarn over, bring your hook in back of your work, insert your hook from the back, around the post, through the front, and then back out through the back again of the next stitch, yarn over, draw up a loop, yarn over, pull through two, and yarn over and pull through two. You're going to repeat that all the way around. Front post, double crochet around the post of the next stitch, and back post, double crochet around the post of the next stitch. Repeat that all the way around when you come back to your first stitch you're going to finish off with a back post or come to your last stitch you're going to finish off with a back post double crochet and then join with a slip stitch into the top of your first stitch once you come all the way around at the end of your round two join with a slip stitch into that first stitch chain one, do not turn your work. For round three, you're going to single crochet into that first stitch and then single crochet into each stitch all the way around. When you come to the first single crochet stitch, join with a slip stitch into that first stitch. For round four, you're going to chain one. Do not turn your work. You're going to begin by working a half double crochet into that first stitch, into the same stitches joining. Chain one, 
skip the next stitch and work a half double crochet into the next. You're going to repeat that all the way around. Chain one, skip one, and half double crochet into the next stitch. When you come to your final stitch, after working all the way around, you're going to chain one, skip that final stitch, and join with a slip stitch in the top of the first half double crochet stitch. Once you have finished round four, you're going to chain one, do not turn your work. We're now going to work another nine rounds. So this is for rounds five through to 13, if you're working that smaller size of this half double crochet mesh stitch. So begin by half double crocheting into your first stitch, chain one, skip the next chain one space and half double crochet into the top of the next half double crochet stitch. Chain one, skip the next chain one space and half double crochet into the top of your next half double crochet stitch. You're going to repeat that all the way around then join with a slip stitch into the top of the first half double crochet stitch and when working this smaller size, you're going to do this until you've worked a total of uh, nine more rounds. So you can go ahead and work nine rounds of the half double crochet mesh and then uh, meet me back here and we will begin to work the heel of our sock. So once you've worked through to uh, round 13 of your sock, you should have a piece that looks like this. You're now finished the cuff for that small side, and we're going to begin working the heel of our sock. Now the heel of the sock is uh, worked using a uh, heel flap and then shaping technique. It's my favorite way to work a heel. It gives it a nice defined shape. I'll just show you this one over here again and uh, it's worked all as one piece. So to begin the heel flap portion of the sock, you're going to begin by chaining one. This part of the sock is worked in rows. For row one, you're going to single crochet into each of the next 20 for your small size stitches and chain one spaces. So you want to work a total of 20 stitches, uh, working into the top of the, each stitch and into the chain one space. So go ahead, work 20 stitches all the way across. There's 10, 15, 20. Once you've worked your 20 single crochet stitches, you can then chain one and turn your work. Now for rows two through to 10, so the next nine rows, you're going to single crochet in each stitch all the way across, chain one and turn your work. So continue working, work a total of 10 rows of single crochet, nine more rows of single crochet, and then uh, meet me back here. At the end of row 10, 
You're then set to begin the heel shaping. You can chain one and turn your work. To begin the healing, heel shaping, you're going to work this again in rows. And row one, you will single crochet into each of the next 12 single crochet stitches. So into that first stitch, there's one, two, three, and 12. You're then going to chain one and turn, re leaving the remaining stitches unworked. For row two, you will single crochet into each of the next four stitches. At the end of row two, you can turn, uh, chain one and turn your work. For row three, you will single crochet into each of the next three stitches and then single crochet two stitches together. To work the single crochet two stitches together, you're going to work first in this next stitch and then down into the next stitch two rows below. So on to your first uh, longer row there. You're going to work the first leg, insert your hook into that next stitch, yarn over and drop a loop. You then want to jump down two rows into the next stitch yarn over and pull up a loop. Make sure you pull that stitch fairly tight because you don't want to have any gaps there. Next, yarn over, pull through all three loops on your hook and your single crochet two together is complete. To finish off row three, single crochet into the next stitch there down below. Turn your work. For row four, single crochet into each of the next four stitches single crochet two together working the first leg of the stitch into that next stitch and then jumping down into the next stitch two rows below yarning over drawing up a loop Yarn over, pull through all three, making sure that stitch is fairly tight. And then finish off row four with a single crochet in the next stitch. And turn your work. For row five, single crochet into each of the first five stitches. Single crochet, two stitches together, working into that next stitch, and then down into uh, the next stitch, down at the bottom there, the base of the heel shaping, and single crochet into the next stitch. Turn your work. For row six, you can single crochet in each of the first six stitches. Single crochet two stitches together. And single crochet into the next stitch. Turn your work. For row seven, single crochet into each of the next seven stitches. Single 
single crochet, two stitches together. and single crochet into the next stitch. Turn your work. Row eight, single crochet in each of the first eight stitches. Single crochet two stitches together and single crochet into the next stitch. Turn your work. For row nine, single crochet into each of the first nine stitches. single crochet two together and single crochet into the next stitch. For row 10, turn your work, single crochet into each of the first 10 stitches. Single crochet two together and single crochet into the next stitch. This should bring you to the end of your heel flap. You can then turn your work. You'll have a nicely shaped heel and we're now all set to begin the foot of our sock. Now the first few rounds of our sock, of the foot of our sock, are the more tricky ones. So we're going to go fairly slowly here. What you're going to do for round one of the foot of your sock is single crochet into each of the next 12 stitches. So you're now working across the top of your heel and you're going to single crochet along each of these stitches. If it helps you to remember where that first stitch is, you're welcome to go back and uh, mark that stitch. After this round, you won't need to use that stitch marker. Once you've single crocheted all the way across the uh, top of your heel there, you're then going to evenly work seven single crochet stitches down the side of your heel. Now there's no pretty places to put your hook, so you're just inserting your hook where it feels comfortable. And you're going to work seven stitches down the side. So there's one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. You'll want to leave just a little space there down at the bottom before you hit the base of your foot. Once you've worked seven stitches down the side, you're going to work a single crochet three together. The single crochet three together is going to be worked by inserting your hook into the side of your heel uh, and drawing up a loop. Then you're going to insert your hook at the base of the heel where it joins the cuff of your sock. 
yarn over and draw up a loop. Finally, you will insert your hook one more time into the top of that first half double crochet stitch, yarn over and draw up a loop. You can then uh, yarn over and draw through all four loops and at this time it's important that you pull them fairly tight because you don't want to have a gap here in your sock. Once you've done that, we're going to chain one, skip the next chain one space and half double crochet into the next half double crochet stitch. You can then repeat that all the way across to the other side of your heel. Chain one, skip one, and ha uh, skip the next chain space, and half double crochet into the next half double crochet stitch. So you're just picking up that mesh stitch. It's going to take you all the way around to the other side of your heel. So you've continued working all the way around, working your half double crochet, chain one, skip one, half double crochet, all the way to the final half double crochet right before uh, where your heel joins. You'll chain one, skip the next chain one space. You're then going to work another half double crochet three together. Um, sorry, I'm going to bring myself one more here half double crochet three together, inserting your hook once into that next half double crochet into the same space as joining. And then once more, just into wherever you're comfortable into the side of your sock. Yarn over and pull through all the loops on your hook. You're then working up the side of your sock and you're once again going to work seven single crochet stitches up the side of your sock. One, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. Once you reach that first stitch, you can then join with a slip stitch into that first stitch. For round two of your foot, chain one, single crochet into each of the next 10 stitches, uh, sorry, 12 stitches all the way across the uh, end of your heel. You're then going to single crochet into each of the next six single crochets down the side. And then single crochet three together, this time working your first two legs into the first two stitches and then into that first chain one space, yarn over, pull through all three. Next, you're going to work a half du double crochet into that first half double crochet stitch. So just whatever the next stitch is, you're going to kind of mimic it there. Work a half double crochet into that half double crochet and then continue with your mesh. Chain one, skip the next chain one space, half double crochet into the next. You're going to repeat that all the way around to the final chain one space before you reach the other side of your heel. 
Once you come around to that chain one space, you're going to work a single crochet three together, inserting your hook into that first chain one space, then into each of the next two stitches. You can then single crochet in each of the next six stitches up the side and join with a slip stitch into the first stitch. the end of your round two. For round three, chain one, single crochet into each of the next 12 stitches. Single crochet into each of the next five stitches down the side of your heel. And then single crochet three stitches together, working in the first two stitches, and then into the half double crochet stitch. You can then chain one skip the next chain one space and half double crochet into the next stitch. You're then going to repeat that all the way around. Chain one, skip the next chain one space and half double crochet into the half uh, double crochet stitch. Continue that all the way around to the half double crochet before your heel. Once you come around to the half double crochet before your heel, you're going to work a single crochet three together in that those next three stitches, the half double crochet, the former single crochet three together and into the next stitch on the side of your heel. You are then going uh, to single crochet up the side in each of the next five stitches and then join with a slip stitch into that first stitch. For row four, you're going to chain one, single crochet into each of the first 12 stitches. Work five single crochet down the side of your sock. And this time you're going to single crochet two together once into the single crochet three together and the second part of your stitch into the chain one space then half double crochet into the next half double crochet stitch, chain one, skip the next chain one space, and half double crochet into the next half double crochet stitch. Continue that all the way around to the chain one space 
uh, that uh, is right before your heel. Once you come to that chain one space right before your heel, you're going to single crochet two together, once in the chain one space, once into the single crochet three together stitch. Actually, I'm going to go back and pull that stitch a little bit tighter again to make sure there's no big gaps. You're then going to finish off by working uh, one single crochet in each of the next five stitches. You can then join with a slip stitch into the first stitch. For rounds five through to 19, so for the next 15 rounds, what you're going to do is you're going to start that single crochet mesh pattern again for the foot. So for your round five, you're going to half double crochet into that first stitch, chain one, skip the next stitch, half double crochet into the next. And you're going to continue that pattern all the way around the sock, either skipping uh, the stitch or when you come to your mesh part there, you'll be skipping the chain one space. But chain one, skip one, half double crochet in each stitch all the way around. Join with a slip stitch at the end of this round in the first stitch. At the end of your round five, you've joined with a slip stitch. Then you can work your next 14 rows. So you'd like 15 rows in total of this uh, half double crochet mesh. So chain one, half double crochet in that first stitch, chain one, skip the next chain one space, half double crochet into the next. So you can go ahead and complete uh, those 14 more rows. So starting from your heel, you'll have a total of 15 rounds of these half double crochet chain one spaces. And then you can meet me back here uh, once you finish the foot of your sock and we will work on the toe shaping. Once you have worked your 15 rounds of the half double crochet mesh there for your foot, you're going to begin the toe shaping. So to find, uh, to begin for your next row in the toe, you'll want to work just one round of single crochet stitches, working first in that same stitch as joining, single crochet, and then a single crochet in each chain space and each stitch all the way around. So go ahead, work one round of single crochet stitches. You can join at the end of this round with a slip stitch in the first stitch and then meet me back here. At the end of row one, we're going to uh, remove our crochet hook for just a moment and we want to find the two sides of our foot and mark them because they are going to mark the place where we work our stitch decreases. So what you're going to do is take the foot of your sock and you're going to lay it flat on the floor just like this as though uh, the foot or the heel and the sole of the foot are downward. So you want to kind of make sure that the foot is laying flat and you want to kind of find your two sides uh, of your foot. Once you find those two sides, you're then going to take your stitch markers and mark each of the stitches. It doesn't have to be exact. You just want to find two stitches that are the on the side of your sock and mark them with your stitch markers. 
just like so. You can then uh, replace your crochet hook and the rest of the sock toe is going to be worked in continuous rounds, meaning you're not going to join at the end of each round. So we've joined at the end of our round one, but uh, that's the only time we're going to join. So after round one, you've marked the two sides of your toe. You can then chain one. And from now until uh, you reach 28 stitches all the way around, you're going to work single crochet decreases at each of your stitch markers. And I'll show you what I mean. So you're going to start by working a single crochet into that first stitch and then single crochet in each stitch all the way around to that first stitch marker, wherever it is on your foot. When you come to your first stitch marker, you can briefly remove it. And over the next two stitches, you'll work a single crochet two together. So insert your hook into the next stitch, yarn over, draw up a loop, insert your hook into the next stitch, yarn over, draw up a loop, yarn over and pull through two loops. You can then replace your stitch marker. Continue working around your sock, working a single crochet into each stitch, all the way around to your next stitch marker. So I'm just going to continue working around here When you come to that second stitch marker, you're going to briefly remove the stitch marker. Over the next two stitches, work a single crochet two together. Replace the stitch marker and continue working around. When you come uh, to the place where you first joined, as I am coming here, Instead of joining with a slip stitch into that first stitch, you're just going to make a little jump. No need to join, pull it a little bit tighter and work your first stitch. So now there will be no seam in the toe of your sock, uh, except for uh, at the very end uh, when we sew it together. So then you're gonna continue working your rounds whenever you come to a stitch marker, remove it, work a single crochet two together, replace the stitch marker and continue on to the next one, single crochet two together and so forth. You're going to continue to do that until the toe of your sock has about 28 stitches together and uh, then you can meet me back here and I'll show you how to finish off the toe of your sock. Once you've worked the toe of your sock down to 28 stitches, and depending on the, the type of toe, you can work it down to less if you'd like, um, or have more, it, it's really up to you. So I found 28 was good. Uh, you're going to join with a slip stitch into that 
uh, first stitch and you're going to fasten off leaving a fairly long tail. You can then go ahead, remove your other stitch marker and using that long tail, we're now going to sew the top of our toe closed. Turn your sock inside out, pulling your tail through and then using a yarn needle, you can just quickly working through both uh, thicknesses, just work a quick stitch around the top. My sewing terms are not up to date, so I'm not quite sure what kind of, <laughs> what stitch this is called, but we're just going through the tops of our stitches, sewing it closed all the way across the tip of our toe. It does create a little bit of seam, which is why I like to turn it inside out so that seam does remain on the inside of our sock. Continue sewing all the way across. When you come across to the end, you're just going to fasten off. I like to have a little bit of a knot there just in the corner to make sure that these stitches do stay intact. And then I'm just going to weave in my end. You can go ahead and trim it then weave in any ends other ends that you may find on your sock there's one uh, possibly up here at the cuff turn your sock back right side out and your first bottom sock is complete. You can then go ahead and repeat all of those steps for your second sock. You'll soon have a pair and you can go off and enjoy them. So thank you so much for joining me for this tutorial on how to crochet the autumn sock. Uh, be sure to give this video a thumbs up and uh, don't forget to check out uh, some of the other videos here on my, on my uh, channel. There are two other tutorials currently here for socks and more will be added in the future. So thanks again for joining me. Until next time, happy crocheting. Bye.